Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate from OpenTX to EdgeTX and back again. Before I get started, I just want you to see that I've got OpenTX installed on this Esheen TX16S. You can see on this page I've got my model. My Sector 5 is loaded with a couple of widgets. I've got a secondary widget screen with GPS and telemetry values. And then as far as the operating system goes, I have OpenTX version 2.3.13 installed. I wanted to show you all this because I want you to see what it looks like before we migrate and then at the end I'll show you what it looks like after we migrate back but I did want you to see that we're starting with OpenTX to begin with. Alright let's get started. There's a couple of different ways you can handle your SD card. The easiest way is just to buy another one and use that for experimenting with EdgeTX but if you don't want to do that or if you're comfortable handling data Let's just go ahead and do it that way on this radio. The first thing we need to do before you do anything else is plug in your radio, select SD card mode, and when you do that, you'll get a pop-up on your computer showing your SD card contents. Let's make a folder on your computer somewhere safe, and I'll call this OpenTX Production, and I'm just going to copy my SD card contents over to that folder. By doing this, we have the option of going back and forth between Edge and OpenTX. And EdgeTX will make changes to your model file and some of your other radio settings files that you can't revert. So the reason we want to take this backup copy is so that if we want to go back from EdgeTX to OpenTX, it's easy to do that. Okay, now we've got a copy of our SD card stored safely on our computer, and we can basically act with impunity at this point. The next thing I want to do is unplug the radio, turn the radio off, and then we're going to plug the radio back in while the radio is turned off. The reason we want to do that is because the Edge TX Flasher tool relies on the ability to use the DFU utility, and we have to make sure we have the right USB driver installed to do that. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. You're going to go to Google and download a tool called Zadig. I'll put the link in the description so you can find it easily. With Zadig downloaded, you'll simply click on Options and hit List All Devices. And then we're going to put the drop-down list on this option right here called STM32 Bootloader. Since I've already installed the USB driver, it's showing on the left-hand side that the driver installed is WinUSB. That's the one we want. You're probably going to see something like LibUSB or something to that effect. All you have to do is make sure that you see WinUSB over here on the right and hit Install Driver. In my case, I'll just hit Reinstall Driver and let Zadig do its thing. Another way to do this, if you're familiar with it, is using the Impulse Driver Fixer. But for this video, we'll just stick with Zadig. It works. Okay, the process should conclude with this message. It says the driver was installed successfully. We've got a backup of our SD card. We've got the correct WinUSB driver installed. That'll let us move back and forth between EdgeTX and OpenTX as much as we want. Now we'll close the Zadig tool, and the next thing we'll do is grab the EdgeTX flasher. I'll have links for the EdgeTX flasher in the description, but once you get to that website, you download the flasher appropriate for your operating system. They've got Linux. Mac and Windows. So download the latest version. The development on this platform is happening very quickly so I recommend if you're going to use the flasher just stop by and download a new copy. It only takes a second run the install and you'll always have the latest and greatest because they are developing at a rapid pace. So go ahead and run the installer. You can bypass any security errors or messages you get from your operating system. Okay, it's time to flash Edge TX on our radio, so we'll click on the flash option over here on the left, and for firmware branch, choose Edge TX Firmware 2.4. As of this video, that is the latest revision. If you watch this video later, you may see something else like 2.5. Obviously, choose the one appropriate for the time. In my case, it's 2.4. For the firmware version, they go by dates, so just choose the latest time and date stamp that you can find. In my case, it's 628 at 1224 Zulu time, so I'll click that. And then the next option is to select your radio. In my case, this is a TX16S, so I'll just click on that, and I'll click right. Now, once you see this download progress meter start, you know you're in good shape because it's actually writing the firmware to the radio now.
When the flasher has completed writing the firmware to the radio, you can close this window. And then the next thing we'll do is disconnect the radio from the computer, which will power it off. And then I want to start it up in bootloader mode. So we'll push T4 and T1 in together and press the power button until the screen lights up and then we'll let go. And what you'll see is we've now have the Edge TX bootloader 2.4 installed and we have an option to plug in a USB cable for mass storage. I want to do that now because I want to prepare the SD card. So we'll plug the radio back in and that'll bring up a couple of screens on our computer. One of them is a look at the SD card. This is the SD card contents from OpenTX. We now need to add the SD card contents for Edge TX to this card. So what we'll do is click on the SD card window in the flasher under radio target, click the radio appropriate for your use case. In my case, it's the TX16S. Choose the language. You've got Czech, German, English, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Russian. And then select the disk that you'll be using. In my case, it's letter I. Notice that letter I doesn't show up. So if that doesn't happen, what you want to do is hit rescan disks. And now you'll see letter I with OTX. Now OTX is the label that I had on my drive prior to flashing edge. I might want to change that later, but for now that lets me know that I have the right SD card selected. If you want to erase your SD card before proceeding, you can leave this box checked and it will take care of cleaning off the old SD card and writing the new SD card contents to your card for you. I personally recommend that because you're changing operating systems probably a pretty good idea to start fresh and don't forget we've got a backup so if we want to restore things like our images or our models we can do that so i'll leave erase disk checked in my case and then i'll hit write to sd card notice the warning this will erase all the contents of your card except for your models and radio settings are you sure you want to do this we'll hit continue on the left hand side you can see these folders getting deleted Okay, when the SD card flasher is done, you'll get a message that says finish adding all packs. You may remove the disk now, so we can close that. Now we can close the flasher. And the last thing we want to do is go back to our original SD card file and take a look at the images folder. That's going to be empty. So if you have images, in my case I do, you probably want to drag those over to your new card. Just copy. And if you have any specialized scripts or wizards or tools that you want to copy over, you can do that as well. But barring any additional things you might want to migrate over to your new SD card, that's it. We're now on Edge TX. So we can remove the USB cable from the radio and then exit out of the bootloader. And we should be greeted with a nice new install of Edge TX. SD card conversion required. The one thing I want to point out here is that it's going to make some changes to your models. So you can't bring these models back into OpenTX once you've done this. See how it's converting the model binary files? Welcome to HTX. Okay, you notice if I click on model select, my sector five is already selected. Also notice across the top row, there are categories, but these categories are no longer editable. That's a topic for another video, but I just wanted you to see that there is a migration change that you're going to encounter where the categories have been kind of realigned and you can no longer edit the categories directly on the radio, at least as of today. Notice on the main screen, all the widgets for my sector five are gone. And also notice that all my additional pages of data are gone as well. So all I'm left with is my single page and a top bar. That's it. And the widgets are gone and my top bar widgets are gone. So after you migrate to Edge TX, you'll have to add your widgets back and any subsequent screens that you'd find and any widgets you had on your top bars across all of your models. So there's the migration to Edge TX. What happens if you want to go back the other direction? Let's go ahead and cover that now. First, we'll turn the radio off, and then we'll reconnect it to our computer on the top USB-C port. The six-position light should stop right there. That means the radio is ready to receive data. 
Okay, the next thing you'll do is go into Companion. You'll need to make sure you have a radio profile set up with your radio and your radio type, and then any build options you want. A lot of people get crazy selecting stuff in here, like they'll add no override channel as an option, and then they say, why don't my override channels work? So just be careful. I only use no heli. That's the only one I use. So I'll just turn that on, and that's it. Make sure you have a profile name that you can recognize. Make sure your radio type is correct. And then once you've done that, you'll click on this download button to download the latest firmware. I've already downloaded the latest firmware. It's on my computer. If you haven't done it already, it will give you a copy to download. Once you've done that, you can hit the right firmware button right here. And in my case, I already have the OpenTX TX16S option downloaded for this radio. So I'll use that and then I'll hit right to TX. You'll notice that brings up the DFU flash window and you can see that we are writing the OpenTX firmware back onto the radio. Okay, the firmware has been updated successfully to OpenTX so we can close out of Companion now. The last thing we'll do is disconnect the radio from the computer. We'll press T4 and T1 inward and turn on the power. This will get us into the bootloader, and notice we're back into the OpenTX bootloader. The next thing we'll do is reconnect our SD card, and you'll see pop-ups on your screen showing your SD card contents. So on the SD card, I'm going to go ahead and erase everything. I'm just going to get rid of it because that's all EdgeTX stuff. Okay, with our EdgeTX SD card contents removed, we'll go back to our production copy that we saved on the desktop to begin with. And we'll simply copy that over to our SD card. Now, if you use two different SD cards, obviously this process gets a little bit easier because you don't have to do all this copying back and forth business. But if you only have one SD card or if you're confident managing data, this is also very simple to do. Okay, with our SD card contents now copied back over to the radio, we can unplug the radio from the computer, exit the bootloader, and we'll start back up in OpenTX, back where we started. There's an SD card warning only because I haven't, I've updated my firmware without updating my SD card content yet, so that's why that's there. There you go. We're back to the original model layout that I have. There's my sector five with all my widgets. There's my secondary page. I can click on model select and see my list of categories and all my aircraft. And then when I click on the system button and go to the left, we can see OpenTX version 2.3.12, just like we started with. Okay. In this video, I showed you how to migrate from OpenTX to EdgeTX, how to back up the contents of your SD card, how to flash Edge firmware and the Edge SD card contents onto your radio, and then how to revert from Edge back to OpenTX. I hope you found this information useful. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.